Hi, I'm Ryan and welcome to another episode of Marlboro Minute where we explore all the different things that are happening right here in your city, Marlboro, Massachusetts. So last week I got a, a call on the phone from Jim Joubert and Jim is here with me today. Jim wanted to bring to light that many people in Marlboro are experiencing Parkinson's disease. It's not a contagious disease. He made me, he wanted to make sure that was very clear right off the bat that, I, that it isn't contagious. He wanted to eliminate some of the stigma against it, but also wants to let Marlboro residents know that there is a brand new group being formed as a support group so that people in Marlboro or even some of the surrounding towns and cities that have Parkinson's disease have a place where they can meet up and socialize and, and bond together. And I'm sure many other things can happen in a support group like that. So I'd like to welcome to the show, uh, we have Rosemary, we have, we have Jim, and we have Chip. So welcome to WMCT TV studios. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to start off with, with Jim first. Uh, you called me and the first thing you said was, don't worry, it's not contagious. Why was, it, why was that the first thing that came out of your mouth? Because there's so much issue going on in, in, the, in the bigger environment of things that are contagious, COVID and so forth. I wanted to put people at ease. I'm a person, I have issues, but I'm not contagious. And I found that broke the ice for people who were a little bit standoffish about what does this person want to talk to me about? Right. And when you say it's not contagious, they go, thank God for small favors. Mm. What is Parkinson's disease? That's a really broad, big, big question there. And I leave that to any of you to, to answer. Uh, what, what is Parkinson's? I can start with that. Uh, sure. Parkinson's may be a family of several diseases. It's, it's coming to light now that because it manifests in different ways that they actually may be different diseases. But it's essentially a damaged portion of the brain that no longer makes the chemicals we need. Something with dopamine, right? Dopamine I, I is, did some research. Yes, yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah. Dopamine is what keeps us steady handed and steady walking and standing upright. And with a lack of it, we tend to have tremors, we tend to have stumbling. Um, it's a very necessary part of moving your body. And uh, without it, or with less of it, we get into trouble. And that is the essence of Parkinson's. What has been, what's happening medically? What advances have there been in medications or treatments or therapies in Parkinson's recently? Uh, uh, any, any info there? I can take that one. Yeah, so um, the baseline medication, carbidopa levodopa, is what most people know. It's Cinemet is the brand name. Um, that one's been around for a very long time. Um, and then there are auxiliary medications that help deal with the coming on and off of, of Parkinson's medications um, and things that help keep that even flow of dopamine that helps make people feel feel better, move more easily, and that kind of thing. So that's primarily where the new medications come in. Um, and there's work being done to modify the progress of Parkinson's disease, but as of right now, there is nothing that does that. There are also um, surgical interventions like deep brain stimulation and uh, focused ultrasound is a newer therapy. Interesting. So Jim, you saw a need in Marlboro, the city that you've lived in for many, many years. A city, you saw a need for a support group for Parkinson's. Why, why did you see that need? Because I have Parkinson's. And when I went, like I said, when I went to the senior center and spoke to the staff there, I got told there was nothing, there was nothing available. And I said, the population of over 35,000 people, and you're telling me there's no one with Parkinson's, someone is missing the boat. So I, through people in Westboro, who directed me to Rosemary, I'm learning more every day. It's a never-ending learning process. You never know it all. Uh, the people who go around saying they know it all, you know enough to turn around and walk away from it because they're only going to confuse you. Uh, so, um, of course, the Senior Center offers many other types of social groups, from bingo to a million other things. 
What's special about a Parkinson's group that you, that you're creating right now? What do you hope to for people to experience from from that particular group? To know that there are other people in the community who have Parkinson's mm -hmm. that may or may not be aware of the availability of resources like Rosemary offers. I mean, I was talking to my next door neighbor who told me a, a lady up the street had Parkinson's. I went and visited her. She's had it for over 20 years. Wow. So it's, it's, it can be, I guess there's a slower acting Parkinson's and there's a faster working Parkinson's. I appear to be on the slow track and I'm very happy for that because it, ends, it can end up being terminal. Right. Now, Chip, my understanding is that you've been a part of a Parkinson's support group group in a neighboring town. Am I right? Yes, in Westboro. In Westboro. So how long have you been a, a member of that group, and what has that experience been like? Because I'm sure we're trying to replicate some of that camaraderie and bonding and support in the group here in, in Marlboro. Well, the Westboro group has been in existence probably 10 years. I just came into it two years ago. And the best thing about that is to be in a room with other people who are acting like you act because of the disease, or they're thinking like you think because of it, or they're moving like you move. Mm. Uh, so the basic message is you're not alone. And sharing some of those concerns you may have, especially newly diagnosed, that is a terrifying thing. Sure. And you would like to find out more, all you can, in fact, and getting in a room with other people who've been through it, that's really important. Right. I'm curious, would this, is this group open to families and support members, people that don't have Parkinson's, a spouse or a brother or sister or someone, or is it more a group where you're with other fellow people with Parkinson's? We try to be both. Um, caregivers can come, spouses can come. Uh, we welcome them to come in because they often have better observations. Like my doctor asked me, do you have uh, resting tremors? And I said, no, and my wife said, yes, you do. Mm. And they observe things that we may not even pick up on. So they're certainly welcome at our meetings. Now, Rosemary, you work for a much larger organization and you help all of these smaller support groups, is my understanding. Tell me about that work. Yeah, so I work for the American Parkinson Disease Information and Referral Center at Boston University Medical Campus. Um, and so we have an information and referral line where we can take calls from all over the state. Um, and help people find resources for things that they need. As, as uh, Jim and Chip have both been saying, um, Parkinson's can be complex, and also it can be very individualized from person to person, and so support groups are enormously helpful to help just see that other people are going through this, but we kind of help to fill the gap if, for example, you go to the Marlboro group, but maybe you live just outside and you're looking for a physical therapist nearby we can help with that. Ah. So tell me about the Marlboro Group. Has it started? Have you, have you had a meetup yet? We had, we had our first meeting the first Tuesday in August. It's been going every Tuesday since. We meet on Tuesday mornings at 10.30 to 12 to 12.30 at the Senior Center. It's open to anyone. In fact, I personally recommend that the more family members get involved, the better it is for the person that is the disease. Right. Mm -hmm. People don't always understand that, but like Chip said, his wife says, yes, you do. Sometimes we don't want to admit that we have an issue. One of the problems I find many of the people from Westboro and others I've come in contact with, balance the ability to stay upright, and if you fall, what are you going to hit? Mm. I mean, my first experience with responders, I, could, I was laying on the couch watching TV, and I went to get up, and I couldn't move the rest of my body. And I tried for, must have been an hour. Finally, I gave up, and I dialed 911. It was not a pleasant experience. No. Uh, shortly after that, I was getting ready to go outside. I wanted to turn the faucet off for the sprinkler, and I made a cardinal sin mistake. I didn't look before I leaped. 
I did a face plant on the lawn. Mm. And I ended up with a broken elbow. Mm. Now it's taught me a lot since then. You're gonna do something? Like we tell the kids when they get ready to cross the street, look, listen, and then move. So when I'm out walking, if I wanna cross the street, I stand there until I can hear no cars moving in either direction, then I know it's safe for me to walk across the street. In this state of Massachusetts, the pedestrian always has the right of way. I wish I could tell that to the people who drive on my street mm -hmm. because the speed is much higher than the posted speed and you take your life in your hands trying to cross. It's something that you we take for granted, you know, and often you see the signs, slow children present, but it's not just children that are present, it's people of all ages and, and all abilities that you should be looking out for. We're all children. <laughs> Some of us are just older children. <laughs> if you don't believe me, ask your parents. He's still my son or she's still my daughter. That makes them the adult. Child is the child at any age. Are there any plans for this support group to do any sort of fundraisers? I see, I see walks for Parkinson's and different things like that. Are, is there any goal to one day expand to, to do something like that? Funny you should ask. This coming Monday will be Labor Day. That's right. We're in the Labor Day parade. Uh, I'll be riding in the back of a Mustang convertible. Sweet. <laughs> And I, I'm toying with the idea of having four kids carry a blanket that people can toss money into so we can get our owl, which is a device that helps people talk remotely, something that Chip could enhance upon. Yeah, I've seen the owl. Seen it's the a, owl? sort of a tele teleconference tool that mm -hmm. interacts with Zoom, and it lets many people in a meeting setting um, suddenly have access to a, to a Zoom. What would you use a, an owl for within a, a Parkinson's support group? We had started out saying we were just going to meet in person, and then during COVID, we decided we we're going to meet just by Zoom, and then we tried a hybrid model where some people were at our meeting site and some people were Zooming in. And the ability to figure out who is speaking on Zoom is not a given. No, no. And the owl is a device that turns and looks at you when you speak. So we would like to get one of those for our meetings. Um, they're just about $1,000. And most small groups like ours, that's hard money to come by. Sure. What happens in a meeting? Is there a structure to it? Is it informal? Are there Dunkin' Donuts munchkins? What's, what's going on? <laughs> All yes. of the above. All of the above. <laughs> Um, our leader in Westboro is a woman who's a retired physical therapist. So she understands that we do need to move all the time. We need to be moving. So we always leave her 15 to 20 minutes at the end of our meetings to get up and stretch and wander around and move. So we tried to feed the brain, the, uh, the intellect. We tried to feed the heart with support. but We also tried to feed the body with motion. Any, any words for our audience who might not be so familiar with Parkinson's? Any, any last words of wisdom or advice or support that you can offer our viewers? For any of you. I don't have any words of wisdom. I'm still learning. My wisdom isn't really wise. It's just normal. I, I try to keep a positive attitude because my doctor, the day of my diagnosis two years ago, he said that is the most valuable thing you can have as a positive attitude because everything else is trying to push you down. But I, I fight back with everything I've got. All right. I would just say that, you know, no matter where you are, try and reach out because there are fabulous people like these two gentlemen right here that are in your community that also know what's going on with Parkinson's and they can help you out and they can be a friend and a listening ear. And, and you have some resources as well, right? I do. So if you reach out to the Information Referral Center, um, we can provide you with a list of support groups and try and match you with one that might be a good fit. Um, our phone number is 800-651-8466. Um, we also have an informational website where we list all of the um, support groups in the state of Massachusetts, and that's apdama.org.
Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time out of, out of all of your days to visit us here at WMCT-TV. And I'll be sure that, to swing by the Senior Center one day to, to give a little coverage of your support group and see how it's coming along and, and see what else we can do to support you in the future. That brings us to the end of another episode of Marlboro Minute. If you live here in Marlboro, Massachusetts, and you want to let us know about something happening right here in your city, whether it's a nonprofit or a community group or just a fun activity for the whole family, please be in touch. I'd love to have you on the show. This is Ryan Maliar, and take care. Mm -hmm.